there are five eliminated teams in the NFL for playoff contention. What do you do from now on? Your season is over. You can't be fighting for a Lombardi trophy. Instead, the three regular season games that remain, do you just play because you want to win? But is there some strategy that goes into it? What I'm going to be talking about are those teams that are eliminated from playoff contention. And I'm going to mention five things that eliminated teams should be doing the last three games to go into 2022 to help out the roster, to give them a good idea of, hey, I like this player, I don't like this player, et cetera, et cetera. First, let's talk about the Jacksonville Jaguars. And two out of the five things revolve around the Jaguars. The first thing, keep feeding James Robinson the ball. Uh, I know that's tough to do. Maybe under a different coaching regime, it was tough to do. But moving forward, now that you're not under the reins of, of Urban Meyer, James Robinson should be utilized as a three-down back moving forward. And now, this isn't because it's common knowledge, like, oh, yeah, of course. Like, he's your starting running back. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? But I'm saying this because you want to see and truly analyze James Robinson as a three-down back for this regular season, which, I mean, the last two years he's looked like he's a good three-down back. But moving forward, going into 2022, you've got Travis Etienne coming back from an ACL injury. This gives you a good idea of how do we split the workload for our running backs. James Robinson, three down back, moving forward, gives you an idea on how to use Travis Etienne. The next thing, it, it's still with the Jacksonville Jaguars, which by the way, it, our eliminated teams, we didn't mention this, it's the Jaguars, the Lions, the Texans, the Bears, and the Jets, just to give you guys an idea. The next thing that the Jaguars should be doing, this is number two out of the five things that eliminated teams should be doing. Run Trevor Lawrence in an offense slim, similar to the one that he ran in Clemson. So I know this is kind of tough to process because, I mean, you you lost Urban Meyer. You, you have Darren Bevel, who's had a great history of being an offensive coordinator with the Seattle Seahawks, and, and, and he stepped in against the Houston Texans. Now, Brian Schottenheimer has the play call duties now as offensive coordinator. Darren Bevel gave those play call duties up. So I know it's kind of confusing for Trevor Lawrence. I, I know it's like, ah, dang, man, I got like pretty much three different people yelling in my ear like what, should, what I should be doing, what I should be running, and, and you know which plays I should be running this season. But if I was Brian Schottenheimer and I have control of the offense, at this point I'm like, all right, let me put on some film of Clemson. Okay, he, he does good in this area. He does bad in this area, which I'm pretty sure the Jaguars have done all season long. But if you utilize Trevor Lawrence more in RPOs, run pass options, use his legs a little bit more uh, on top of his pro-style arm that he has, I think that might actually help you get a better idea of, in 2022, how to use the strengths of Trevor Lawrence. Just a thought. Just a suggestion. Not that he watches the show, not that Brian Schottenheimer watches time to football, but still, you know, Trevor Lawrence, second thing that uh, eliminated teams should be doing, utilize Trevor Lawrence and more RPOs and that offense that he used, uh, that offense that he was involved in, in Clemson. Number three, the Detroit Lions. I know this isn't going to be a popular one, but they need to shut down DeAndre Swift for the regular season. Ooh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Some of you guys that are watching right now are fantasy football fans and have DeAndre Swift, and you're like, man, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. I understand. I know it's not what everybody wants to hear, but I'm just being realistic here. What are the chances that the Lions would bring back DeAndre Swift, who has not been practicing, not been practicing since week 12, since Thanksgiving Day, since he suffered that injury? What are the chances that even if he comes back limited this week for week 16, that the Lions are like, yeah, let's play him. If it was like a contract year for DeAndre Swift, right? <clears throat> if you didn't know what you had in DeAndre Swift as a franchise running back, sure, play him. See what you find, like what the Seattle Seahawks are doing with Rashad Penny, right? 
is a contract season for him. Like, just play him. Your running, your running game is not that good. See what you got. But with DeAndre Swift, I think the Lions have a pretty good grasp on, on, on what kind of player DeAndre Swift is. And he's a very good, freaking good player. DeAndre Swift, nothing left to prove for the Detroit Lions. This is it. Just shut him down. Shoulder injury, heal him up, get him ready for OTAs. And that's what I would do. And I think realistically, that actually might happen. That actually might happen. So that is number three on the list. Number four, the New York Jets. They should give more playing time to the rotational players on defense. This defense is not great. We know this. You've got some studs on defense that have been looking kind of good this year. But overall, you give up a lot of yards on the ground, a lot of yards through the air. What's the harm in putting in some of these rotational players and taking some of these starters out? I mean, just increase the snap count of a lot of these players. Uh, I believe it was Hamza Nazardin uh, that was drafted out of the fifth round, I, I believe, for the New York Jets, a safety, right? There, there was a lot of people that were saying, like, man, this guy could surprise some people. He's being drafted in the fifth round, but, I mean, he could be like a day two kind of player that gets drafted in the second or third round. And the Jets are still only giving him 5% of the snaps for the season. I mean, on the depth chart, technically, he might be listed as a starter, but he's just, he's just not playing a lot of snaps, right? So why not younger players like that, like other defensive players, give them a little bit more playing time for the rest of the regular season just to see what you got. When you improve your defense in the offseason, hey, which players we want to keep, which players we want to start. And now I think that Nazardine is on the COVID-19 list currently by the time this video comes out. But that should be a player, and, and many other like-minded players like him should be given more playing time moving forward. And the last thing an eliminated team should be doing for the rest of the regular season. And now that technically, technically, this team is not eliminated but they shut down their starting quarterback for the re remainder of the season. And there's a law. It's a log shot for them to make the postseason. So I think the Giants are already aware that they're not going to be making the playoffs. But the New York Giants, right? Start Jake from the rest of the regular season. Don't put in Mike Lennon at all. I mentioned this on yesterday's show. But Mike Lennon and three and a half quarters. In that game against the Dallas Cowboys, 99 yards passing, three interceptions. 99 yards in three quarters. In four minutes, that Jake Fromm took over as a Giants quarterback, 82 passing yards. And that gives me a little bit of hope with Jake Fromm. Hey, Joe Judge, we don't know if your job is going to be kept in 2022, but... If you want to finish the season strong, if you want a good chance of winning so that you can save your job, maybe finish 7-10, and 10, win three straight, which, I mean, for them to make the postseason, they got to win three straight, and then other teams have to lose. So it's going to be difficult for them. But in order to just keep your job for 2022, let's just play Jake Fromm, who looked better in that game against the Dallas Cowboys. Let's just see what we've got. I've got nothing to lose. Nothing to lose at all. So those are five things that eliminated teams should be doing in the regular season moving forward to close out the 2021 season. If you have another idea, another thought, another opinion, please comment down below. Let me know your thoughts.